All right, let's solve this differential equation. Uh, this looks suspiciously like an exact differential equation because we have a function of uh, x and y uh, all attached to a dx plus another function of x and y all attached to a dy and it's all equal to zero. So this looks like it would have the form uh, where this would be our m, our function m of x and y. And this is our other function, we call it n of x and y. So we think this is exact, so let's go ahead and check. And remember, the way that we check if it's exact is we take the partial derivative of m with respect to y, and if that's equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x, then it's an exact equation and we can use the method. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take partial derivative of m with respect to y. So we'll do this term by term. The partial derivative of y cos x with respect to y is just cos x, right? Because everything that has the x in it is just treated as a constant. Plus, well, we would have 2x e to the y. That's this term with, uh, that's this term's partial derivative with respect to y. All right, so we have that. So now let's check dm, uh, sorry, dn with respect to x, the partial derivative. So partial derivative of sine of x uh, with respect to x, that is just cosine of x. And here we get plus, well, the 2 will come down, so we'll get 2x e to the y. e to the y remains as a constant. And minus 1, that just goes to 0. So let's look at this. We have cos x plus 2x e to the y. Cos x plus 2x e to the y. Hey, look at that. This is an exact differential equation because this all works. All right, so then the way that we solve this, we need our solution of phi is x of y. So let's say, let's let, um, actually, no, before we do this, remember from the last video, we had, here, I'll just copy this in. Uh, we had this from the last video. This is our, our sort of method for solving exact differential equations. This was one of the methods. Remember, we could do the opposite, just pretty much replace all of the m's with n's. Um, but here, let's let go of that. So this is our method, so let's solve this. So we have phi of xy. So we just want to write this down. So this is going to equal phi equals the integral of our function m, which is y cos x plus 2x e to the y dx plus some function g of y. And we don't know what this function is yet. And remember, this was all equal to c, but we'll get back to that later. So what we want to do is we actually want to do this. So we can say that phi is equal to, well, the integral with respect to x of y cos x is y sine x. Plus we have here, this would be x squared times a half, but the 2 cancels out, so we get x squared times ey plus this function g of y. All right, so now remember what we have to do is we'll take our next step. Maybe we'll shift it over a little. Uh, now we want to take the partial derivative. So we say that d phi dy is equal to the partial derivative of all of this stuff. Um, instead of writing it again, let's just save some time here. All right, that's a bit faster. Partial, oh, that's kind of messy. <laughs> okay, well, you guys get the point. Take the partial derivative of all of this stuff. So we want to do that. We say this is going to be equal to, well, this will become sine of x. The first term will become sine of x. The next term, nothing's really going to happen here because x squared is a constant and the derivative of e to the power of y is e to the y. And this will be plus g prime at y. Right, the partial derivative of a function that is only a function of y, uh, its partial derivative with respect to y is just its derivative. Okay, and this is all equal to our n, right? This is all equal to our function n of x, y. So that's equal to sine of x, trying not to run out of room here, plus x squared e to the y uh, minus 1. All right, so let's look at this. We have lots of information here. Um, 
we see that there's a sine of x on both sides, there's x squared ey to both sides, and there's a 1, and this is g prime of y that we don't know. Well, we can just cancel some of these out because we divide both sides, or subtract both uh, sine of x from both sides, get rid of those. Subtract x squared ey from both sides, get rid of those. And notice that the only thing we're left with, you'll see that we have g prime of y is equal to minus 1. So that's how we solve for g prime y, and we just take the antiderivative, so we have g of y is going to equal negative y. Alright, so let's look at this now. We actually, we're pretty much have our solution, so we'll just uh, we'll change colors again and come up here. So remember our solution is phi of xy. So we can write that. Uh, phi of xy, uh, that's supposed to be a comma. <laughs> My writing is getting a little miss here. Uh, so we also had phi defined up here, right? So we have phi is equal to y sine of x plus x squared e to the y plus g of y. That's actually going to be g of y is equal to negative y. So we we'll subtract y. All right, so that's what 5x is equal to. And then to finish it off, we we'll can say that our general solution to this this original problem up here we'll say is y times sine of x plus x squared e to the y minus y is equal to c because if you recall that phi of xy is equal to c so this is how we would write the general solution to this problem alright and that is again the general solution to our initial problem. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video, and we'll actually do an initial value problem with uh, these exact differential equations because it's been a while since we've looked at those. Okay, see you guys there.